I saw Richard Sherman said, and I don't necessarily disagree at all, that you're no longer feared. I guarantee you every NFC North team is excited to see Jordan Love. Ecstatic. I guarantee it, Green Bay Packers. You Nobody will fear you going forward. Understand that. And I talked to a buddy in the NFL like, yeah, I don't take the Packers seriously anymore. For 30 years, they've had Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. And every single year, like you might have been a hater or whatever, they were getting picked to make the playoffs. And the overwhelming majority of those seasons, they made the playoffs. And a big reason why was Favre and freaking Rodgers. I'm sorry, those days are over. And like, I don't think most people are going to pick them to make the playoffs. Now, obviously, just because people don't pick you or think you're going to be any good does not mean that you can't be good, right? We all thought the Giants were going to stink. Then they were solid. We all thought Seattle was going to draft number one overall. They went nine and eight and they were in a playoff game. So I wouldn't bet my life that the Packers are going to stink or not be a playoff team. But history would show us you usually don't go far. Rodgers, and then another top 10 quarterback. It's probably over. Now, if LaFleur just turns out to be some stud coach, and I think he's pretty solid, but it's kind of hard to judge when you've had Aaron Rodgers playing at a really high level and Devontae Adams. And Gudekins right now, like McCarthy and Ted Thompson became legends because when they traded Favre, and Favre had been kind of being a diva for years, they literally went to Aaron Rodgers. (laughs) And then within a couple years, They won the Super Bowl. So it worked out perfect for them. And if I would say if Jordan Love is just like Dak Prescott or Kirk Cousins, these guys are getting large extensions and they will be viewed as, I I don't want to say geniuses, but it'll be very, very impressive. The chances Jordan Love is those guys, though, to me is just slim to none. That's just not the way historically the NFL works. And when you just look at the math, like, the the likelihood that he's going to be a bottom 10 quarterback is complete. Like if you were a betting man, you would bet on that over to be the ninth best quarterback in the league, especially he's surrounded by a lot of young players. And it's not like this Packer team was dominant last year. And whether Rogers obviously didn't have an MVP like season, he's still more than likely in 2022 better than Jordan love is going to be in 2023. So if they went eight and nine last year, What are the chances they win seven games this year? I would say I would probably hammer the under. And I I just think that more often than not, when you make these moves, it's not all their fault. Like Roger started acting weird. Devontae said, I'm not going to resign with you. But ultimately on Brian Gudekin's resume, he was the guy that traded Devontae Adams and traded Aaron Rodgers. Now, again, you put it in context, but we all know that's not exactly how it works, right? There was a lot of, variables with far but Ted Thompson got the credit pulled the trigger transition and they kept kicking ass and his dude started winning MVPs and taking them into the playoffs and winning in the playoffs and hosting playoff games I I just think the likelihood of that is just not great you know now the one thing they got going for them is the NFC isn't great and their division is more than questionable the it's clear the Vikings are going through this transitional period and the Lions are ultimately the Lions. Now, I love their roster. They got a lot going for them. But even they kind of had this bridge quarterback in Jared Goff, right? He's not, he's solid, but I wouldn't say he's their franchise quarterback. They could easily draft a young quarterback, you know, in the next week. And, you know, that transition to that guy, and that guy might not turn out to be good. But I, I think the day and age of just chalking out, you know, the Packers, like being the Pittsburgh Steelers every single year, winning 10 to 12 games, it's over. It ended. Very risky. Uh, you know, and, and I just think that, you know, Gudikins and LaFleur, their careers, fair or not, are going to be defined by, I would say, the next 24 months. Because I would assume uh, they're going to pick up the fifth-year option. If Jordan Love is a quarterback that you give a contract extension to, all gravy. You, you're in great shape. But if in two years you're looking for another quarterback, they are in major trouble. Because we just know how hard it is to find, right? It's it just, it's very, very difficult. The other thing, the best two players on this roster by a country mile over their run were Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers. Two players that this general manager and this head coach inherited. Now, I'm not trying to just shit on Brian Gudikins here. Whenever I've heard him talk and the way he's handled the situation has been impressive. 
They don't teach you how to deal with all this stuff when you're a road scout or the pro personnel director. This is only something you can learn kind of on the job. And you even have, you either have like the wherewithal, uh, you, you can take the the bullets that are going to come flying or you can't. And he's proven to be pretty impressive, at least to handle it publicly. But ultimately you get judged in this league, not on how you give a press conference or how many people in the media talk, you know, talk you up it's about your wins and losses. And if you start losing some games and you start missing the playoffs a couple years in a row, the difference always was when, and listen, I, I've been watching the Packers. I mean, one, they've been one of the biggest national teams since Fox got the NFL. But when I was a kid, like in the Bay Area, in Northern California, they, they were the 49ers rival and they were a powerhouse. And up through, you know, when I got in the league and they transitioned to Aaron Rodgers, like they might've missed some playoffs some of those years with Favre and Rodgers. But you always had one of those two guys the following year. And you went, this, we'll turn it around. And more often than not, they did. They won double-digit games, they get back. They'd win the division. And they benefited their division, you know, I would say over that period of time. has not been great. But they've had, you know, kind of the, you know, the most important thing you could have. Superstar quarterbacks. Not, not really good quarterbacks. Not like, you know, you can win 10 games, 10, 12 games every year with Cousins or Dak or, or Lamar or Kyler or whoever. They had... All-time greats. I mean, both guys, I think, without hesitation, I'm putting in my top 10. Definitely, I, listen, I'm not Belichick a historian, but when you factor in my lifetime, easy top 10. I mean, you could, in my life, definitely the internet age, I mean, beside Brady and, and Manning, Roger would probably be third, right? Just the best quarterback we've seen. Mahomes is obviously coming strong, uh, but what a day.